why sometimes my mind drifts. Gotta be supernatural, you make it from dying here. Hey, I lost the closest thing to my heart and almost drowned in tears. But granted, lives are still standing. I would never hide a fear. I stand bold on these ten toes. Said I was gonna do it and I did it. Niggas talk, but I'm never moved by their opinions. I make music for those that love the culture. Women that's in tune with their children. And all the go getters that made it over. I do this for the forgotten city of Macon, Georgia. They wrote us off as old as Redding, but the wait is over. What's going on, everyone? It's your boy, Mike Ryder, Mr. Accountability, the man behind the microphone. You are tuned in to another edition of Mike Ryder Talks. I got a special guest on the line with me tonight, somebody who is anxious to get on the line. They ready to get on the line. I am looking at them. I can see them. Y'all probably can't, though. Before I get into that, let me get into this. Mike Ryder Talks is live every Tuesday, every Thursday at seven o'clock. Facebook, YouTube. Twitch. If you haven't followed or subscribed on any of those platforms, you need to do it because I have some high profile guests coming on just like my guests tonight. Now, outside of that, let me get into this sponsor real quick. Y'all know how I am about this thing right here. They don't even want to do right by me. They don't want to do right by me. Your boy Mike Ryder, man, I don't teamed up with the cook shop matter of fact let me put their stuff on the screen y'all know they got the hemp based products handmade products that help you i'm gonna tell you how they help you if you have anxiety depression you lack sleep you have a problem with waking up in the middle of the night you need to deal with them with their products i know you see the flower that's not what you think it is that is hemp that is 100 percent legal hemp Y'all know what I do around here. I get into the products. They got the coffee. They got the lip balm. They got the natural soaps. They also got the tea. I love the tea. That's what I do. I go and get the five pack of tea. I boil my water. I take my tea bag out of the pack. You see the big juicy pack right there. I drop it into my cup. I let that thing steep for about 10 minutes and voila. Anyway, I drank that right before bed. Best sleep ever. You can go to their website, www.thecookshop.com, place your order. Once you place your order, right before you check out, you can do the promo code Mike. Hit the promo code Mike. You'll get 10% off of your order. That's going to get you right. I see you over there. I see you red shirt. That's going to get you right. Either way, let's get into this, man. I talk a lot. I'm ready to get to it. I'm ready to get to it. Listen, I got a special guest on the line with me tonight. Let me go ahead and put this right here. I got someone who is from the Brooklyn area. They done came down here to the Macon area some years ago. They made an impact with the clothing line. They made an impact with the art. My lady done won an award. I don't know how she did it, but we're going to figure it out. Very, very artistic. I got someone on the line tonight by the name of Tiara Ponce. Yes. Ponce. Oh, I can hear you now. <laughs> How are you doing this evening, ma'am? I'm doing really good. I thought I broke it. No, no, you're good. It's just sometimes. Sometimes. Right. So let's start from the beginning. Okay. Tell the audience who Tiara is. Give them a brief description of you. Tiara. Tiara is an artist, an art activist, a a friend, um, a supporter of the arts, and a teacher. I'm a radio personality. I'm a versatile, positive ball of energy. That's a good. That's a good description. Yeah. That's a good one. Let's get it. Okay. You're from Brooklyn, correct? <laughs> to the fullest. And you know how we do. Right. Um, you moved down to Georgia when? At 2015. 2015. Yep. So you've been in Georgia for about six years now? Uh-huh. Going on, it'll be September. September will be six years. My birthday is in September, so you're a lucky girl. Hey. How do you feel about Georgia? Since you've been here, you've been living in our culture. You're here now. You're family. How do you feel about Georgia? I love it. 
I love it here. Okay. Like for me, it was a warm welcome. You know, I started when I my first thing I did here was Geico, so that'll make you like not like, um, you know, Georgia. But like when I quit Geico, my life just changed. Like I love you know shout out to my people at Geico, but like that thing stressed me out. So I love Georgia now. <laughs> but, shout yeah. out to Geico. Shout out to Geico, yes, because people definitely, you know, that's the first time they heard this voice. Thank you for calling Geico. This is Tiara. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> what department did you work in down there in Geico? All right. So, boom, customer service. And then I was like, um, I could do sales. And it was like, okay, do sales. So, I switched to sales. And it was like, um, you like sales? I was like, mm-mm. Because they wanted you to, like, do your job. And I was like, so, I went back to Wait. service. Wait, wait. You said no because they wanted you to do your job? Like, do it. Like, it's like one thing. Like, I'm at work. And it was like, do your job. I was like, all right, y'all. You know, like, I already got to sit in these chairs. They went and let me take people's chairs. So I had to just, you know, the regular seats and stuff. I was like, mm -mm. so I went back to service because service is like, you do your job, but you do your job. <laughs> Listen, anybody who is new to my show, I do something that a lot of shows don't do. I put my comments on the screen. So my <laughs> man, CJC, who is the MVP, by the way, y'all need to find out his cash out. He said, what prompted you to move from Brooklyn to Georgia? Because you could have moved anywhere. I see the hate, too. <laughs> I could have moved anywhere. Um, My mama moved here, honestly. Uh, So I moved here in September. My mom moved here in April. So I was just like, at first I was up there. I was pregnant. And I'm just like, you know, I was like, my mom moves. And I was like, I'm good. I'm grown. You know, I was 23 years old. I'm like, I'm grown. I'm grown or whatever. And I lasted from April <laughs> to September. I was like, you know what? I'm going to move or whatever. And um, my daughter's dad, my fiance at the time, like, I was just like, you know, we're waiting for orders. So I'm going to go down, you know, to Georgia and then let me know. And he wound up moving to Woodstock. So, yeah. Mm. That wound up working out for me. So Georgia, my family, you know what I'm saying? As far as like my mom and, you know, now my baby. That's not a baby anymore, but yeah. I'm going to stop you right there because I should have started here. Tiara Ponce. Yes. Where's that name coming from? Because that doesn't sound like the typical name. <laughs> uh, my daddy, Jose Ponce. Uh, uh, I will say full story. Okay, so Tiara Johnson going to school with a bunch of Tiara Johnsons and in high school my teacher was just like you know she was like you have to be more proud Mira you know you you understand the culture you write it you speak it you this you that like she's like you need to be more you know full of your culture and I was like okay like you know what I'm saying I'm gonna get mad at me and she's speaking to me in Spanish or whatever so I'm just like all right so it was nothing so I was like okay and she was like what do I, I was like, what do you propose? And she was like, Tiara Ponce, what's your daddy's name? And I'm just like, Jose Ponce, yeah, Tiara Ponce. And I was like, okay. And then like literally ever since then, it was just like, boom. So I mean, legally, yeah, that's my name. I collect money in that name. The banks respectfully, you know what I'm saying? You so know? legally is Tiara Ponce. Yeah, it's both. Legally, that's the funny part. <laughs> <laughs> so, honestly, the pun say to me, it hits hard. Like I told you before we started, I always thought your name was Tierra Punts. Yeah, no, you gotta say. <laughs> hey, but shout out to Andreas Cook, he corrected me on that. Yes, yeah, so Tierra Ponce. That for me every time. Shout out to Andreas. <laughs> shout out to Andreas, that's my guy. Oh, yeah. If you mispronounce my name, he going to go, it's Ponce. It's Ponce. It's Ponce, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, we got the name. We got you moving to Georgia. You worked at Geico. Mm -hmm. What made you leave Geico besides having to do work? Like work? Um, staying on the phone, um, listening, um, showing up to work, um, the job, my supervisor. I was going to beat I, I was going to tell him. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um yeah just like it was just it wasn't a that whole you know that's a, it was a different culture you get what i'm saying and for me i realized very quickly there's nothing wrong with the job like i mean mm -hmm. given it's a great job for me i'm just right, right. i was 
not built for that. I like when I look back, I'm just like, it was you, Tiara. Like I literally had supervisors who would tell me, like, you're a social butterfly. You're not gonna stay on this phone. You're not gonna, you get what I'm saying? And I was like, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm go sit in the parking lot. Like, I need a second. Like, and they'd be like, No, you gotta sit here. Mm, no. So yeah, it was me. <laughs> so you left Geico, you went from Geico to entrepreneurship, correct? You know what? Boom. So I did, right? Because I was sitting at my desk knitting hats. So the hats that I still like make to this day, um, that's what I was leaving Geico doing, like hats or whatever. And I was just like, you know, I'm going to, I had the crib boutique. So it was like mommy and me stuff. I'm a, you know, pretty mom. So like I was making little hats. I was knitting hats for the women at my job and stuff. And for me, I was making money at my desk. So I'm like, man like i'm get, i'm doing that and then i'm like already not liking the job i already have other stuff that i'm working on so i'm like you know what so yeah <laughs> there well while you were there you established a career boutique left there i was good for like a little minute but one day when i was mad i um i went to verizon over on west Macon, like presidential and i was like you know what I'll forget this job and find something else that I want to do. And I applied for the job. So when I quit Geico two months later, they called me and they're like, hey, did you still want that job? And I was like, and for me, I was like, you know what? I ain't doing nothing. Like I can still do both. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have to let go the job and start entrepreneurship. I don't even advise that to people now. I'm like, stack your money up. You know what I'm saying? Like, because for me, I was just really like, one day I just went into Geico and just grabbed my Versace lotion and like my yarn and my pictures of my daughter and I just left. Like, so for me, I went to Verizon and I was there. They said they gave me like a free commission check for like the first three months. So that's what I did. I went and got the first three months commission check for free plus, you know, working and stuff. And then I quit that too. And then, then I became an entrepreneur. So you moved on with the crib boutique, correct? Boom, yes. Let's get into that. Okay. What made you want to get into getting into this type of stuff here. Cause these designs, when I tell you she has some fire design, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got the bags, got the shirts, you got the hoodies. This stuff is fire. So what made you want to get into this? Okay. So before I moved um, to Georgia, I was actually designing my friend's clothing line. Hold on, hold on, wait right now. I want to address somebody real quick because he's a troublemaker. He said, you did better than me. I just didn't go to work. <laughs> That's Andres. Shout out Andres. Hey, Andres, okay. man. <laughs> right. Like, and that's the thing, though. I, I did that for the longest. Like, I was like, I just wouldn't come. But then I had figured out, like, FMLA, that whole thing. So I was getting time off. So, and then after I was like, wait, my lotion, like, in my pictures. That's the only reason why I went back. The so lotion I did, I made you come back? My lotion, I had this really, you know, bright crystal Versace lotion. So yeah. I wanted to make sure I got that. And then I had like pictures of my daughter and then like cute pens. So I went back and got that stuff. And I wrote a letter to my supervisor because I see her in the building. I was like, let me go ahead and do this because this looked professional. So the pettiness is real. You left there, did the Verizon thing for a little while. Then you started the crib boutique. Like I said, what made you get into that? Uh, the crib boutique. Okay, so the crib boutique. Um, it started in the crib. For me, I'm a preemie mom, uh, both times, and uh, my babies are small. They don't wear regular clothes. They can't fit preemie clothes even. One pound four ounces for my first daughter. One pound eleven ounces for my second. So for me, it was just like they was like, oh, you know, the babies aren't gonna wear clothes. They're just gonna be, you know, kangaroo. And I was like, ill. Like you get what I'm saying? As a new mom, you wanna be cute. So for me, I would sit there and I just figured out how to knit. Like I had learned like one little like slip knot stitch or whatever um, from my aunt. And I was like, I could do that for hats. I could do that for this. I could do that for that. And I would just sit there in the NICU for hours. I would be there. You know what I'm saying? What else is there to do when you're a NICU mom other than sit in front of an incubator? And I sat there and I would just make me and, me and my daughter just matching hats. So at the hospital, I almost got kicked out because I started a business when I was, you know, pregnant because I was sitting there knitting and moms would begin to try to leave money for me, like bed 213, blue and white. And they wanted the same thing I was doing because I was getting cute pictures with my preemie, whereas moms was like covering the cords and they were trying to, you know, make it a cute situation. 
it's not that cute. You know what I'm saying? Our kids' lives is on the line. But for me, I made the best of a messed up situation by having mommy and me. And then, of course, when her dad would come, it would be daddy and me with, like, George Bulldogs, because he's from Georgia. George Bulldogs, colors and stuff for them to match. So parents start going crazy. Um, and they was just getting me to just crochet them, like, blankets and uh, boppy covers and mommy and me, daddy and me, grandma and me sets. Um, pretty cool story uh, with the Crip Boutique. I have an artist now that's like super dope, like everybody knows her, um, Tima, Tima Young Dula. And um, me and her were actually uh, NICU moms in the hospital together at the same time. Our daughters are exactly a week apart. And I made her a hat set and, um, in the hospital. And later on, of course, like I featured her on Power 1071. Like she's been featured on show and stuff. And like, I'm like, you never know who people are. You get what I'm saying? And she told me, she was like, you know, that moment really meant a lot for me because, you know, we were going through tough times. Like every day going in here and beeping sounds on your child, you know, whether it's weight or, you know, whatever you deal with as a, as a Nikki mom. But um, yeah, it started in the crib. It started in the incubator. Um, and for me there, it just kept going. Of course, I wasn't going to get, let people put money in my daughter's incubator, but I was definitely out in the hallway taking orders, you know? And um, I did that at the hospital, kept it going. And I would just make my daughter little clothes, little clothes, little pants, just little things that I knew that, you know, she wasn't going to get in the preemie size because preemie size was basically zero to three, but it was the zero, you know, so the, the companies weren't even keeping up. But for me, I was like, I don't know about you and yours, but we going to rock out. And then, of course, when I seen other moms wanted, I'm like, duh, you do what's right. So I just made sure everybody was loaded. I just kept it going. Like I said, my man, he the MVP. He got another question. He said, when quitting both jobs, did you use money you saved up to start your business? And how did you stay afloat when building your business, you know, with life, bills, you know, stuff like that? Oh, boom. Okay. So um, <clears throat> when I, I had some, I had like savings or whatever. Um, surprisingly, the hats was a little money. Uh, and I did have those like free commission checks. Like, so boom. If you get a job at Verizon or whatever, or any like phone store, they really do give you like three free checks. And them things was like, what, $1,500 a month or something like that? So it was just like, I would work my hours, but then the last Friday of the month, they would give me $1,500 extra. Cause it was a portrayal, you know, like a portraying of what your commission check would be. And it was like, okay, eventually you're gonna work and get that check. So I was like, I don't want to be here that long. So I just saved those little checks. You get what I'm saying? So I had that money to flip. But honestly, when it came down to t-shirts, I started the Crip Boutique with $36. I just made three mock-up shirts. Yeah, I made three mock-up shirts and people just began to buy them. $36. Bucks. Um, so I wish I could say I did more, but mm -mm, I learned what a digital t-shirt mock-up was, which is that right there. Um, and yeah, <laughs> made three of those, went to, went down to Wayne and, um, printed that, those shirts and did mommy and me orders from there. Thank yes. you for catching yourself. Um, Aisha, she said, girl, that FMLA will get you right. So you can leave. <laughs> I want to say something real quick because yes. Facebook be hating. These big companies going to start hating Geico Verizon. <laughs> the views and opinions that my guest express on my show does not reflect the thoughts of Mike Ryder. Okay. So, thank you. <laughs> right, right. They, are, they are a complete reflection of someone owed a check. <laughs> oh, well, we ain't going to get into that. Um, my man, CJC, he said, so, did you build social, social media presence for your business? I did. I did. Um I got lucky enough to be able to, like, once I had hood life, um, I was, like, just trying to throw it out there. So I would let people know about it. When I would see, like, local music videos and stuff, I would be like, hey, can you, you know, wear a shirt? Want to wear a shirt? Like, and, like, I would just do a lot of product placement. Um, I'm big on sales. I have a sales background. Um, so I kind of knew, you get what I'm saying, posting it on my page, um, sending, up to, sending some up to my cousin um, up in Brooklyn or whatever. I literally had them like in her closet and she was a pop-up shop in Brooklyn. So when I was posting it, you know, I got people here, but I got people home. So they're like, oh, where can I get it? Pull up on Toya, go to Toya. And she had these shirts already in a couple sizes and she would wear them to parties because she's a, you know, she would go out and party and stuff. And they're like, oh, where'd you get your shirt? And one thing I will tell you, I've had my website for now, what, four years? Yeah. 
three years. So that was the one thing I knew off rip. As soon as I made those mock-ups, I immediately went and made a website. So it was really accessible to be able to do that. And then product placement, again, of course, having ambitious graphics. Shout out to ambitious graphics. With putting my product in a store. So as soon as I produced it, I had store placement. So it really didn't take much for me to get traction. But once it did, it, you know, it was pretty cool. Sure. And like those bags there and stuff like that. I went to showcases. I was huge on vending. So that was another thing that I helped. I did to like really push my brand. I was everywhere. Like it was no place, whether it was Brooklyn, the Bronx, Atlanta, um, what, Pennsylvania. Like I was at all the art galleries, all the shows or whatever to sell my stuff. And like I said, you have some fire designs. You have some nice product. I got to get me some of this. Yes, you will. <sighs> Shout out to Miss Chandra. She said hi. Michelle said hey. Hey. And Rashad, he said tipsy. Hey, tea. Oh, I love. Um, love to y'all. Make sure y'all, you know. Sorry, I gotta plug my people. Nah, plug your people because they gonna plug you. <laughs> we good. Yes, y'all make sure y'all download Dreams Need Love too. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Damon. Damon just bought a shirt. Hey, Damon. Shout out to Damon for the shirt purchase, man. We're gonna move on from. Yes. The crib boutique, because we got a lot of things to cover with. <laughs> After the crib boutique came uh -huh. Tipsy Arts, correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, tip <sighs> Shout out to my friends. Tipsy Arts was a drunk dare in the back of the t-shirt shop one day. Um, I was like, what y'all do around here? Just always just, you know picking at people. I'm like, for real, like, what y'all do? Like, what y'all do for fun? Well, sometimes we this and that, and then we go up to the A. No, like, what y'all hear? I'm not getting in my car driving an hour. What do y'all do? Long story short, I was like, sit in the bank. Boom, let's do it. Who do it? For us. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, and it was like, nah, nobody. Look it up. Nobody. Bet. Say less. And it was like, man, you ain't gonna do no sipping paint, man. You know, they ain't doing no sipping paint. Because for me, they'll see me put together a t-shirt design, but they haven't seen my artistic painting, you know what I'm saying, drawing tea. Now, mind you, people at Geico, this makes sense for them now because on my desk, that was the other thing I went back for was like my little papers that I had of like Ed, Ed and Eddie and Dexter's Laboratory and all these different sketches that I would do when I was working. So, um, like for me, I was just like, bet, I'm going to do it. Like, why not? So it was, what was that, 20, 2016, 2017, 2017 or whatever. And I made the flyer, dropped the flyer or whatever. And I was like, January 11th, we're doing a sipping paint party. Um, and yeah, Tipsy Arts uh, first party was in the uh, Midtown Key Club. And it's been now in almost every venue downtown i would say and then of course we've touched other sides of town but as far as downtown we've been a lot of places had a lot of fun and the key club downtown with shout out to the key club that the key club family right right man shout out to them um i'm liking these canvases that you have so yes. when I asked you earlier if someone wants to get the canvases they're already pre-drawn like that they just have to paint it in right that's it yes um the solution i'll call those canvases but they got a free stencil canvas product available at tipsyarts.com um but yeah the the goal for those was of course um i started doing parties here but as soon as i kicked off a sip and paint company of course everybody that knew me from wherever was like um you better you better you better so i was like okay boom back home to new york got to you know then i'm like okay dc the DMV area, really, Virginia, Maryland, um, uh, Jersey, Delaware. Like, I just started just, it was, I had family everywhere. So for me, they was like, boom, my daughter's school, my this, my that, my this, my that. But now if I'm up in New York, then I'm not here in Macon. But I've already started a trend here in Macon, so now I'm getting called back here. So it's trying to make it make sense. You get what I'm saying? So um, one day I was just playing around with some stuff, and I was like, okay, if the image is already on there, I'm going to be there. If the image is already on there, I'm going to be there. How do I get the image on there? I'm not drawing this a bunch of times. Boom. And I just do 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 because what do I know? Hood life. You see that stuff? That's digital art. You get what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, if I digitize this stuff and I make it make sense, 
I can just you know what I'm saying go ahead and produce this product and more so take a step back from hosting because I enjoy dealing with people, but being able to be everywhere at once is not real. You get what I'm saying? Like, so I'm like, how do I be everywhere? You see that logo? And still, you get what I'm saying? Not be there, create a product. And that's why I said, you know, in a little messages, I was like, I am proudly one of the first producers um, of that product. Um, we could Google it. Um, but yeah, that was my solution to not being able to be in. I think I had a booking in Virginia and Macon and I, I chose Macon respectfully, you know, um, but it was like, whoa, I'm losing money. Wait a minute. Hold up, but and they're like, no, but we wanted to, you know, do it with you, your style, your this, your that. And I was like, okay. And after that, I was like, I promised myself I would like literally sit myself down before I figured out, you know, how to keep it rolling. So the product is produced. It's been a pr produced now. It's gone through three, three different productions of mm -hmm. it. But now how we produce now is how it's going to be. But yeah. You, my friend, that's brilliant because listen, I've only done one sip and paint and it was <laughs> blank canvas. Yeah. And we had to follow the instructions to paint whatever. Long story short, I'm flicked it. I can't paint. I can't you know what's the cool part about it though, too. So more so than ever, remember I told you I'm all about entrepreneurship. It always has to be everything's bigger than you. Like I said, I'm a good energy. Why I say that? Because that's my really only responsibility. I don't gotta go around the world and pay bills and you know do all this stuff, but I do have to be a good person. So my good person is always sharing the wealth. So what I also realized was that a lot of people wanted to do what I wanted to do. So the product itself was also a solution. And that's why I say like, you know, right. And pro period, Andreas, king of products, he know. Like, products don't he know. That. Right. And like, oh, thank you, Miss Michelle. I appreciate that. Um, for me, it was like, okay, I know there are people that if they have the image, they can really be themselves. They could be the personality. They could be the host. They may have a location. One of those reasons is the reason why now you can do what I do. So I created the HYO concept of sip and paint, you know, in the industry itself, it was always the company they hosted, they got it. They do. And I was watching everybody that, you know, I'm beginning to do it. Like do the same thing. Like, no, I'm the host, I'm the host. And I'm like, that's not how we get down, you know, spread love is the Brooklyn way. I'm like, you know what? I got one better. You're the host, host your own. So HYO host your own paint party. So then it was like, okay, boom, that little canvas right there. If I give your daughter 10 of those, right? Those are currently on sale, small canvas, uh, $10, 50% off $5. And you say, uh, it is, I'll use my daughter's name, Yana's birthday. Uh, tickets are, cause you're going to buy a gift regardless, $20 with a gift, 25 without. And now Lil Mama is now making money on her birthday because uh, we know we dished out money for people's birthdays. You get what I'm saying? Especially our kids. So for me, I was like, let's make it make sense. Let's take a concept that people are in love with and now begin to teach public speaking, articulation, and all these other skill sets to our kids, to adults. I got girls in school, like college or whatever, and they order packages and they're getting their way through college. Like with this product, it's like, it sells itself. And no, you don't have to know how to draw. No, you don't have to finish it when you're at the party. You can take just the face and go home and figure out what color background is going to go on the canvas. So it was a whole bunch of solutions in this product. So I definitely just provided some solutions. Like I said, I can't draw. I can't paint that good. Now, I can paint if there are lines already there. Uh -huh. This picture, there are lines there. It's already outlined. Oh. All I have to do is color inside the lines. I learned that in kindergarten. Right. And I can't draw on a blank canvas. So trying to do that wouldn't work for me. Right. But like you say, you can send those canvases out. If you look at the bottom of the canvas, I'm going to enlarge that one more time. You see that she has the Tipsy Arts logo right there. So there's no infringement going on. You know who that come from. Um, right. And right and now, the you other got cool part is it's like It's like art and then it's art. Some people buy those, they blow it up, and that's their painting on their child's wall. Like some people don't even paint them. Like, so now I sell home decor with quotes and stuff on it. Like, cause everybody's just like, oh, I like that. And I'm like, really? What you want, to, what you want the canvas to say? Or, oh, I need a quote from my grandma. Okay. Cool. Other cool part, cause I'm not a hater. You as an artist, say for example, if you're trying to um, start your own sip and paint company, 
respectfully, we create a contract. Me, you know, Tipsy Arts is an artist, and I'll produce it for you. So now you can sell your own, and I remove my logo, and you can put your own on there too. Come on, man. But see, you also have a sale going on you thought it was going to miss. It only got like three more days left, but you got the 50% off sale. Oh, yes. yes, use that coupon code. We are family. Um, and it gives you 50% off your entire order. Like, shout out to everybody who's been really just, you know, blessing the trip, you know. Like, everybody's been showing love. And I think it's because I've made sure I had a lot of, like, Black history and a lot of culture. I love being able to teach through art, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I, I dropped the It Was All a Dream series. So, of course, Martin Luther King and Biggie Smalls. <laughs> Balance. Um, so yeah, just like, you know, I try to keep up, keep up this month, you know, I'm about to drop the St. Patrick's and all the, um, what's it? Final four NCAA theme, you know, more sneaker themes and stuff on there, but oh yeah, we're trying to keep up the uh, virtual paint party. Correct. <laughs> you got a lot of stuff. <laughs> oh, I guess down. You did. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Virtual. Okay. So. Um, I keep telling everybody I've been joking, but I've been dead serious. Like, I'm not going to be the COVID convention. You know, um, I believe in, of course, monetizing yourself during a pandemic. However, I do believe in doing it safe in the comfort of my home. So just like how we're doing right now, um, I have it available. If people want to um, do a virtual paint party, whether it's not one on one, because I feel like that may unless it's like an instructional or whatever but like get you a little girl gang get you a girl group if you want to do like a painting class i do that too which is super cool but you can pick your theme pick your crew and have a paint party on a computer like a bunch of like zoom screens or whatever we play music i bring in the dj sometime and we have a good old time like that one is uh tomorrow in washington dc so i'll be right there in my living room you get what i'm saying and yeah, that's for Banneker High School in Washington, D.C. So, wow. yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, the other cool thing is it's been helping me for COVID because I travel a lot to different states. So I want to say for Christmas, this lady, she couldn't leave the house or whatever. And I did one for her. And it brought all her friends from Tacoma, Washington to Boston, Massachusetts. And we had nine different states, I think like 30, 30 or 31 women in there. And she was like, I haven't seen y'all in so long. And they had all bought the canvases. I shipped them out. I made them a flyer so they all knew, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you order by this date so it could get to your state on time. And I prep it out real cute, you know what I'm saying? Because you want to keep it good. Because, yeah, West Coast mess up all type of shipping all the time. Yes, super good, you know what I'm saying? But like, come watch and i was like girl i need you to put in your order before everybody like do not mess this up they had already agreed i had made them like a little email chain i sent them a couple designs and then some of them went on the website and we set it up and literally to come washington to boston massachusetts and we had a ball them women clearly they ain't seen each other in forever i need to be there really like they got on it and they was just like ooh, child, ooh, child, ooh, child. it was amazing so yeah listen i want to get to this because these comments coming in Okay. Oh, please, Benita. Shout out, Benita, man. I used to work with her. She said, "I love her energy." Thank you, Benita. Michelle said, "Yes, her energy is everything." Oh, you guys. D Stow. Anybody watching this, D Stow is the reason why I know who she is. I didn't yes. know who this woman was, but he posted this picture that he did for you know the photography or whatever. Let me get that off the screen. And I was like, who is this? You know what I'm saying? I can tell just because I'm an art type of guy, like I told you. Yeah. Looking at this picture, I'm like, okay, this is a free spirit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, he tagged you in a post. I befriended you on that post ever since then. I've been <laughs> you know saying, watching your progress. Um, shout out to D Sto, man. Yes, big but, shout out to D Sto. so D Sto really helped me um so much. And um, I'm I'm gonna joke with him before he try to joke with me. I'm so honored to know that celebrity. Um, he's such a a big a big hearted genius. Like he's extremely creative, and he helped me be really adventurous when it came to like self expression and stuff like that. Because for me, I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna climb on this. And he's like, okay, climb on that and grab this. Huh? <laughs> I was just like, okay. Like, this is what we're doing. Like, so I, for me, I just I needed that, you know. 
but the final shot came out loud th- like that, and it's perfect. Yes, yes. I'm gonna and- get one more comment real quick. Anybody watching this, you see how I'm doing? If you have a question, I can post your question on the screen. You have a statement, I can post it on there. Sharita Watson, that's one of my best friends. Oh, thank you, Sharita. Oh, huge on when it comes to custom canvases and stuff. I got custom jerseys, like uh, couples jerseys y'all can do. Um, couples, uh, like love connecting hearts. I customize stuff. You can add your guys' dates, your last names on it down to the T for every couple, however you guys need to do that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Listen, we're going to move on from the tipsy arts. Like I said, I got a lot to cover. I didn't know that this episode was going to be like that, but we're going to get to this. Oh my goodness. I stumbled upon an article. Yeah. For making. So of course I've been seeing this. Yeah. I stumbled upon this article when I looked on her page and it says artist Tiara Ponce 28. Moved to Macon, Georgia in 2015 from Brooklyn. You know how we do. In 2020, she created a box surrounding the base of a Confederate statue in downtown Macon. During Juneteenth, people could paint how they felt on the box as part of a canvas for expressions of black pride. And when I tell you this was an amazing thing, what brought about you covering up that Confederate statue like that? for art for your people because i mean like first of all yeah no like that's what we're not gonna do and i I, like i will say shout out to danny glover um it started with a facebook status and i was just like kind of seeing what was going on with just the world the world lost their mind one day and i was like and i will say like one day like it wasn't already going on but like it was just getting real crazy and i was like okay i don't know what it's gonna say yeah say it again it was intensifying. It was building yeah, up. It was, getting, and then around here, it started being stuff going on with like people spray painting and people spray painted the Tubman, people spray painted in front of the um, on the Confederate statue. People was just you know beginning to kind of trigger stuff to happen here, and I'm like, uh, we just gonna cut this real short. So I made a Facebook status, and I was like, I don't know what it takes, a kumbaya, a prayer circle, or whatever, but we need to get it together because it's just like. You are the energy that you go out. I keep saying that because I really believe that. So, like, that's not the energy we about to do. And I don't care how y'all see everybody. You know, you get into, like, a auntie mode. I don't care what you see with them people do out there. We don't do that. Like, right. that's it all the way. You get what I'm saying? Um, and, like, for me, I'm just like, you know, what what can we do? So, he wrote me and he's like, you know, we have this concept, Block the Hate. And I think it would be a cool idea. Would you, you know, be the lead artist and, you know, kind of you know forward this thing and i'm like okay so he sets me up with this amazing team of people because clearly tr doesn't do construction like i'm an artist but like i keep telling everybody i definitely had a construction team y'all like we really was like a family you know everybody really grabbed some wood and began like drilling and banging and stuff and um we built it because for me i felt like you know respect on both sides you know honestly no we don't want to see no confederate statues downtown People get off the bridge. They looking like, oh, that's that's how y'all feel about black people. Like, yeah, that's not we, that's not what we're gonna do. You get what I'm saying? But instead, I'm also looking and I'm saying like, y'all spray spray painted a Confederate statue, but it's still a statue. So an artist just got disrespected. Did we like what they created and portrayed and the message or you know whatever? No. But are we gonna just disrespect people and their crap? We ain't gonna do that either. So respectfully, build some walls. You know on those limit lines and just make sure that we can say how we really feel. And we did that and the city came together for that. Like you see a little bit of everybody about there, whether it was building it, putting up the walls, painting it. Shout out to Kevin for the amazing uh, mural. Um, Everybody who did their murals out there, Randy Hart with the clouds that you guys just seen, Um, Thurlow, Shamika, Allison, like you see Tally with with a brush. You get what I'm saying? Like people was out side for it and and people really show love and people got a chance to really express how they felt you get what i'm saying like you know presentation and symbolism is everything so when you put statues like that in prominent areas of your downtown area it, it does set a tone for people if they're trying to figure out how to act and for us it proved the point you know what i'm saying and now the walls are being preserved at the tubman museum um and i'm happy to say that i was involved in it Listen, I did not know you were involved in this. I did not know 
this thing had anything to do with you. I just woke up one day and they were like, yeah, they got walls up by the Confederate statue. And I was like, by time. That's kind of how we did it. Really? I, got, I don't know. I feel like, you know, for us, once the, the city cared, and that's what pushed it. You get what I'm saying? Like, seeing that we were we were permitted. Like, I think that was cool. Like, we had permits for that. So it was just like, you know, okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the message is not only being heard, but it's being respected. And, you know, the tone that we thought was set was like, nah, we agree with you. Let's see what people do with it. And it stayed respectful. You get what I'm saying? Of course, we was putting it up and stuff. People had a bunch of, you better not be here when I get back. And I'm just like, you know, dip set. Like, we're going to have to rock. But, <laughs> <laughs> like it was just like you gotta make sure you had a voice like you know and I, I was very happy to see people out there with their kids with their you know their parents and and people telling me stories like you know we did this and and hearing about like Occupy Wall Street like people had stories about this these statues and how they felt whether they looked like me whether they didn't look like me some people was like you know about time and you know that's right and I'm just like yeah but it was it was it's always about us for me it's hood life you get what i'm saying like what you you're gonna be what you live by you're gonna protect what is yours and for us it's the community and the community always know how we really feel not what's always just the sport. facts facts i see the thing about it is you said it's about us that confederate yeah. statue painted a negative picture on our city even though it told a true story still with negativity things that we're trying to move from and we're trying to do better than that. You know, it's about unification. It's about building bonds with people who may not look like us. It's about building bonds with people who also look like us. You know, right. That was the coolest thing I will say because like people who seen who helped and all this stuff, like it was we had like allies. You get what I'm saying? Of course we were outside, but like we really had people who like Shout out to Fatty's Pizza. Like I tell everybody, eat Fatty's Pizza because Chrissy definitely helped. She let me um, build a wall. To do her online when they were trying to come for her? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I came right back. I thought, oh, oh, we ain't going to try her. <laughs> no, we're not. Because I think that, like, what, um, what we, uh, I don't know what she said, but he took it, like, and I was like, no, 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 no. She literally, like, fed us, let us build you know what i'm saying build the wall like she really held us down um so oh by the way i said notification uh we won the court case to remove the statue <laughs> shout out to the statue getting up out of here man hey we'll holler at you man we're gonna holler <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> yeah that's crazy because listen that statue is right. If, like you said, if you turn off the highway to come downtown, it's right there. Like you can't miss it. That's how I was like looking at you. So you see me just now. I'm like. <laughs> so the notification just dropped. Yeah. Shout out to your shout out to your show. Shout out to <laughs> show. Shout out yeah. to Geico. Shout out to Verizon. That <laughs> oh, I'm paying attention <laughs> now. You know what I'm saying? I get to it. <laughs> but I do want to say this. Um, young Brooklyn, she says, such beautiful art and an amazing mission and concept. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, I love your name, Brooklyn. I love right, right. Um, Aisha, I see your comment. I'm gonna hold off on that because that's <laughs> one of the last things I get to. Let's go ahead and try to pick it up. I'm gonna try to get through. So, how did you win this award? <laughs> um that is the Emerging Leader Award, uh, Newtown Macon. Um, I won that award because uh, they said that I did a, a lot of activism. And I was a leader in, in the end of 2020, 2020 uh, basically like as far as doing events downtown um, in different locations and, oh goodness. It was, it was a mixture of stuff. Okay, let me make sure I get this right. Basically, for my award, it was like, okay, I went around in downtown and I was able to like help businesses thrive. Um, 
respectfully during COVID, of course, we pulled off the wall. So that, you know, was a cool thing as well as, you know, business before that with like the sipping pains. I, I'm big on connecting businesses. So I was able to bring vendors from small business and visual artists and performing artists and created a network in a small business, you know, business, whichever one it was, whatever storefront it was and make money, you know, so being able to do that group economics concept. And I don't own a brick and mortar downtown, but I have vendors who can, you know, do very well off of my parties. Um, yeah, they said that a couple of reasons, but mainly those were why I got the award. And I was honored because emerging leader of downtown Macon, again, I don't own a brick and mortar. So it was just like for me, again, it was like shout out to the gang for us pulling off these events. You get what I'm saying? And showing people that group economics. Right. <laughs> Not for I was talking to I was talking tipsy art gang. I was talking about these art oh. parties. Like <laughs> these dope artists. I was a Verizon. <laughs> Shout out to my Verizon people. I really don't got beef with the people at Verizon. Um, I got some of them on Facebook too. So hey y'all. <laughs> but yeah, like no, not Verizon. Like the people that I didn't really made money with, the people who we put together money to get venues, to get you know, photographers to get DJs. Like I tell these artists, listen, it costs this for the venue. It costs this for the DJ. It costs this for security. Honestly, we just started needing security because we ain't had security for like two years, but that's a whole nother topic. We don't need security. We don't have that type of energy. But for us, you get what I'm saying? It was group economics all the way. Let me show you how the concept of us putting our money together equates to more people finding out about our brands and our products and our business. And then we all spread the wealth. As an artist, if you bring someone, you get paid for that guest because they're te you're teaching the people around you to invest in what you do. You get what I'm saying? So for me, I brought that concept to whatever venue was going to let me in. Shout out to Grant. Shout out to the Key Club. Shout out to, I mean, really everybody once we pulled off Summerfest. That was the other thing. I pulled off a festival. So I guess that would have something to do with it too. Yeah. Let me ask you this. We'll move on. I got one more thing to get to with you. Two more yeah. things. You are now a part of the Text James Morning Show at 107.1. Yes. Shout out James, shout out to uh, 1071. Yes, major oh, shout out to James. <laughs> yes, yeah, shout out, shout out uh, Tech, shout out Street, shout out uh, John Boy. Um, uh, of course, everybody at Power. That's family. Um, but yeah, Text James Morning Show. So if you ever hear... Hey guys, it's T.R. Ponce. Turn your radios up. It's the Text James Morning Show. That's me or Pretty Girl Beauty on Eisenhower Parkway. Yep. That's you with the Pretty Girl Beauty? If you got Pretty Girl problems, get you some Pretty Girl hair. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I knew that voice sounded familiar. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're not going to get into that. Let's get into this yeah, morning. Because I don't got Pretty Girl Beauty hair right now. Oh, come on. Because I, I, I want to get to this. How long have you been a part of the morning show crew over at 107.1? Oh, I've been over there since June of last year. So what is that? July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February. Yeah. What is that? Eight months. Dang. Time Eight flies. Eight months. Well, you have fun. I can't pay for it. So, okay, you yeah. over there at 1071. How did that come about? Did you apply? Did they reach out to you? They did. He was like, uh, Tex was like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be talking to the people and I'll be asking them, like, you know, indie artists, the sound, the music, you feel me? Like, the connection. And they're like, man, that girl, she be showcasing people, you know? All of them. Like, visual, performing, but she, she know about the indie artists. And uh, he came to me, he was like, you want to come on on Wednesdays and like talk about like uh wild out Wednesdays and the indie artist connection. And I was like, yeah, sure. I'll do it. Like, I ain't doing nothing. I don't got no job. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, whatever. Start coming on, start coming on. And um, people were receptive to it. Um, calling, writing messages and stuff. So I guess I did good because they was like, you want to come on? Two days, and he was like, honestly, like you fit. So yeah, started doing that. And then once I joined or whatever, I wound up getting a brand manager with uh Pretty Girl Beauty. 
I did their commercials and I had a couple concepts that I brought to them as far as like sales. And he took it. He was like, that's that's really dope. So like pretty in a pandemic, pretty impractical, like just different concepts that I wanted us to run for, for you know, moms and girls who are trying to be pretty during a pandemic. Like, I'm not even about to lie and act like we don't get cute to go on Instagram or cute to get on live or cute to, you know what I'm saying? Because we can't go outside and like want COVID. So it's like we had to be pretty being practical. So yeah, we got that braid right there. Boom. That ponytail was what seventy nine cent plus jewelry. Like you got to be pretty and practical. Come on, shameless, man. shameless plug. And we do provide the hair for you know love and hip hop and stuff like that. So we got really good hair. So of course I'm gonna have it where it's practical for the women I know because why not? Make it make sense. We stuck in the house and you gotta look cute sometimes. Why would I pay all that money for hair? You know. So and if you do, shout out to you. That's amazing. However, you know. We got some sales going on. So that wound up linking up. And then from that, I've just been, you know, doing events, of course, plugging the artists every chance I get, you know, and radio is now my Monday through Friday, six to 10. Monday through Friday, six to 10, you over there at 1071. I want to yeah. shout out them again for bringing you on because just like my show, you mm-hmm. took a lot of energy over there to that station where honestly, I've been listening to them if you're from Macon, you've been listening to 1071 if you're around my age ever since you were a child. So yeah. I saw that stage go from a high level, uh, not stage, that station go from a high level to they started declining. And then they got people like Tex James over there. Everybody know Tex James. Everybody Everybody know. <laughs> they bring T.R. Ponce over there. So now they coming back up. That was a great acquisition to get you guys. <laughs> What goal do you have over there at that radio station? What are you trying to do over there? What are you trying to accomplish? Um, trying to just make sure that we are constantly, um, how would you say, we as as an artist, you want to make sure you have constant platforms that you'll be able to offer. You know, so for me, I'm just like, okay, having the radio, being involved already in the community and being able to really share opinions and more so facts about what's going on and and being a light because i do believe our media needs a light i'm that person in the morning like wake up guys let me tell you something funny or wake up you know you want that good energy so of course i appreciate for those reasons but then it's like okay boom like i do have like an art company with dope artists that have dope music so for me it's at that time as well i'm like okay the music side of it says we're making this work on our end too so, of course, you know, radio is radio, but it definitely has, you know, its perks. Let's get it. Okay, so I want to get to the comments, then I'm going to get to this last thing. Okay. I'm liking these comments, y'all. I'm so sweet. Listen, they be coming through. He said, you helped everyone. You deserve that award. That was for the award. That I'm kind of late to that. Thank Re- you. Real yes, real. period. You better own it. Shop on it. USAClothing.com. That's my base right there, Whitehead. If you look at if you look at me in my picture right now, yeah, I got you a it. Pull on. Come on, let's get it. Let's get it. She uh, said, interview. Oh, boom! She killed it in Goody's video. You guys see that new video that he just dropped? And Aisha. When I say that word. Hmm. <laughs> I lost it a couple times. I was like, "All right, ladies." She said, I need to know Tiara's zodiac sign. I love her energy. I'm a Taurus. I am, um, I, my birthday is April 21st. So I'm technically speaking an Aries Taurus cusp. So, Brooklyn, let me know what that means. Because, like, people be telling me, like, no, you're not. And I'm like, yeah, I am. So I think I, somebody told me I was supposed to be like, I don't know, like a little half demon or something. I don't know. But I don't yeah. call it. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. I told you that I like to play games with my guests. Anybody watching this who's been on my show or been watching my show, y'all know I like to play games. Oh, so okay. we're gonna run through this. Tiara Ponce. Yes. I would like to play a game. Let's play a game. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's get it. And the game that I have for you, it's called This or That. Okay. <laughs> that the music edition and the the rules oh. to this game, the conditions of this game is I'm gonna put pictures on the screen just like I've been doing all night. Okay. 
and I'm going to name what's on the pictures and you get to choose one or the other. You can't choose both. So I know that you're a music fan. I only got a few. I kind of ran out of time. I've been busy today. So you know what? Without further ado, matter of fact, I'm going to enlarge that. The pictures are going to come up over there. Let's get into this. I'm going to start you off with something just to warm you up. This is that. Cash money or no limit. Oh, <laughs> I got to go cash money. Cash money taking over, nine, nine. Yes, I have to. <laughs> okay, we're going to step it up just a little bit. Okay. Erica Badu or Jill Scott? Oh, bag lady. <laughs> I got to go Erica Badu. <laughs> okay. Dang, Jill Scott. Oh, man. Music soul child of Aunt Hamilton. Let's go. Uh, uh, if you know my heart and soul, you know that I love me some music soul child. That's like, I love Anthony Hamilton, but like, I'm not even going to give y'all my teach me how to, like, what? So, so far, you got cash money. You got bad lady herself, Erica Badu. Then you music just soul child. music soul child. I'm going to step it up one more. Please don't put like Cardi B versus Anita Baker because it's gonna trip me up. I'm like, you know, right now. I don't have that, but I do have this Maxwell or D'Angelo. Ooh. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. I gotta go uh pretty wings. Oh man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going Maxwell. You look like you're sweating over there. Calm down. Listen, there's no prize at the end of this game. I know, but this is like, <laughs> these are real questions, Maxwell. I got an even realer question. We're going to do this the Brooklyn way. You know how Brooklyn do Oh, it. don't do it. Please don't do it. <laughs> he said Brooklyn. He's going to make me choose. You got Foxy Brown or Lil' Cam. Who you got? Oh, it's the Queen Bee. I got I to gotta, I gotta go. I got to go with Lil' Cam. I go Let's get it. I got one more for you. I work at Walmart now. What? What was that last thing you said? What What's Foxy Brown do now? You didn't just say she work at Walmart, did you? No, I say that. Where okay. Foxy Brown at? No, oh, no, that's Biggie not or Jay Z. Hove, gotta be Hove though. I definitely painted that picture on the left, but Hove, all day. That's my Brooklyn father. You, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> Listen, y'all, this has been another edition of This or That. You see the choices that she made. I feel like I'm yelling. Let me tone it down a little bit. She got hype. I feel like I'm yelling. No, no, no. You good. You good. You are good. So I'm going to get to this question because she just asked a nice question that I did not want to look over. Okay. Tiara Ponce, what's next for you? Oh, my baby. Shout out to Aisha. Support everything Aisha does because she's amazing. Like add her and then just follow her. She's a, a funny comedian. Uh, what is next? Next is um, oh goodness, art houses. I'm gonna start looking to, you know, have some property here, and begin to have developments for the artists. Um, being able to be a lot more professional, and have some, some more professional settings for artists. So I'm I'm getting into the business side of things. And just stepping it up a notch, you know, of course, we're still going to kick out with the art parties. That's the thing, March 31st. <clears throat> um, but, yeah, I am going to be stepping it up major for the artists because I'm fully invested. Like, I'm not nobody's manager or anything like that. But when it comes to our careers, our professionalism, the way people look at artists, when they come to Middle Georgia, when they're booking us, when they're talking to us, our presentation, the things that we're you know, supposed to have and stuff like that. I want us both visual and performing to be able to have um, some better options. So I'm working on some stuff. Definitely need Aisha. So, yeah. I want to shout out Aisha 
She was on my show the other week. She did fantastic. Amazing. Go back and shout out to Whitehead for the dope, dope own it clothing. I want to get you on my show. I actually want to do some type of business with you, but we're not going to make that about that. Oh, you can, you can ask my baby. We can talk about her. <laughs> hey, but listen, I don't know if you can see it. We've been on here for an hour and 10 minutes. So I'm going to put this comment on the screen. Okay. She said, that's my girl. I swear she's the dopest point blank period. I have something for you. We'll talk when I get back tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and hate. I'm going to hate real quick because she was all on the water. You know she wasn't in America, so I'm about to get a gift gift. (laughs) She was all on the water. She been showing out on the boat. You seen her? I was all on her life. Like, live, live. I'm all in my apartment hating. Anyway. (laughs) Don't you? you. (laughs) (laughs) But listen, Yara Ponce, thank you. It's been amazing to have you on my platform. Thank you to everybody who's been tuning in. Thank you, guys. Y'all are so sweet. Like, that's so sweet. I appreciate this. This was really fun, too. You funny. Listen, I'm going to get you back on here, you know, maybe six months down the line, five months down the line, once you grow, once I grow a little bit more. Okay. We got to make sure that we continue to work together and continue to support so I'll be supporting you for sure. Um, you told me your size and the colors or whatever. So I'm going to be sending you some hood life and some canvases. And um, yeah, everybody, you know, use that coupon code. So. Don't forget about that coupon code. You're going to get 50% off okay. before we get out of here. I will put that on the screen one more time. Um, 50% off on the tipsyarts.com website. Whatever you order, the only thing you have to do is type in we are family, correct? Yes, correct. Okay, so guess what? This is your boy, Mike Ryder, the man behind the microphone, Mr. Accountability. It has been another edition of Mike Ryder Talks. I thank y'all for tuning in. I'm about to do this like I do each and every week. You see the ticker at the bottom of your screen. Until we meet again, be blessed. I love y'all. I'm out.